In this video, we're going to be talking about how much energy we have in carbohydrates and fats within the body. And we're also going to be going over a sort of summary overview, a global style overview on bioenergetics. All right, so let's get into talking about our energy stores in the body. Um, first, though, I want to remind you that our body prefers not to use protein for the production of energy. Our body likes to use protein in order to build things like muscle and organ tissue that we can use it for energy, but we tend not to. So we're not going to talk about that um, on this slide. All right, so we have our carbohydrate uh, storage uh, locations. So various fluids in the body, uh, for instance, the blood, we have blood glucose. We have our liver that stores uh, around 451 kilocalories worth of energy uh, in carbohydrate. We also have our muscles that stores about 2,050 um, uh, calories worth of carbohydrate. In the liver and the muscle stored carbohydrates, go, it's going to be in the form of glycogen, where the fluids in primarily blood is going to be in the storage form. Oh, well, not really a storage form, but it's going to be in glucose. Looking at fats, we have fats stored in the muscle. We have around 1,513 calories of fat stored in the muscles around the body. So roughly, and this is going to be, all this is based on a 65 kilogram adults with about 12% body fat. So obviously how much fat you store is going to go up if your body fat percentage goes up. All right. And we also have uh, subcutaneous and visceral fat that is stored in the body. And we have a 73,320 calories on average um, stored in this uh, subcutaneous and visceral fat. So far more than we have stored of anything else. Notice I actually had to put a break in the axis here because I couldn't possibly show this bar while also showing these other smaller bars um, because the y-axis would be so large that these would look like nothing. All right, so if we put all the carbohydrate sources together, so all of these and all the fat sources together, so these two, we end up with around 2,563 calories kilocalories worth of carbohydrates stored in the body and around 7, 74,833 kilocalories worth of fat stored in the body. So we have far, far more fat than we have carbohydrates in our body that we can use for energy. So talking more about uh, these various sources of energy, uh, again, when we consume food, we can get fats, carbohydrates, and proteins from that food that can eventually be used for energy. We can also use alcohol for energy but it's not something our body normally does and we can't do a whole lot of it. Um, so it's not on this slide. It's also something that for health reasons and for exercise performance reasons, you generally don't want to consume alcohol. So we're not going to talk about alcohol here. Um, so when you consume these, these food stuffs though, it has to go through digestion. And so our dietary fats, so think triglycerides, get broken into free fatty acids and glycerols. The free fatty acids can either go through lipogenesis to uh, be stored as adipose tissue, um, which is stored back as triglycerides, or we can go the other way and we can go through uh, we can, the, the stored adipose tissue and the triglycerides can go through lipolysis to become fatty acids. So this is a, a cycle that can go both ways. And when you have fatty acids, they can go through beta oxidation, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain in order to produce energy. The glycerol molecule that comes from the breakdown of triglycerides, either through consumption in our diet or when we break down the triglycerides in our adipose tissue producing fatty acids, and we also produce glycerol this way, that can go through gluconeogenesis to produce glucose, or it can go directly into glycolysis, uh, then the Krebs cycle, then the electron transport chain to produce ATP. All right, so this is, that's how we, our body uses the fats we eat. All right, so how does our body use the carbohydrates we eat? Um, for the most part, we, we either um, bring in as a glucose, bring it in as glucose, or we convert it to glucose in the body, uh, all the carbohydrates. And so glucose, if it's in excess, can go through lipogenesis to produce fat tissue. So if the glucose isn't being consumed in excess, we can uh, go through the process of uh, glycogenesis in order to produce glycogen, which is the storage form of glucose stored in the, the, uh, the muscles and the liver. Um, we can also break down that glycogen through glycogenolysis back into glucose that can be used directly 
through glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, the electron transport chain in order to produce ATP. And then the last major uh, food stuff that we bring in through our, our, our digestion is the dietary proteins, which will become amino acids. Those amino acids can, when needed, go through gluconeogenesis to produce glucose. Um, our body doesn't want to do this. Again, we don't want to use protein for energy, but it, um, we can if we need to. Um, we can also go through this pathway here, um, breaking down the amino acids through protein catabolism and produce uh, ATP through various different, uh, different pathways. So it has a lot of different places where it can fit in that way. We can um, ideally though, what we would want to do is we would want to um, store the protein. So we'll go through protein an anabolism in order to store the protein as skeletal muscle or organ tissue. Um, but again, that can be broken back down through protein catabolism into amino acids and again, used through this sort of pathway, various pathways to make ATP. If you overconsume amino acids or protein, um, we are going to just shove the amino acids through lipogenesis, producing adipose tissue. If you over, over consume any of these, so fats, carbohydrates, or proteins, they're going to make fat. So we don't want to overconsume um, any of these because again, it just, it's just going to be turned into fat. This is a very brief overview of some of the various bioenergetic pathways and how it connects to the foods we eat. Um, I have videos already talking about um, how we use uh, glycolysis and how we break down carbohydrates. We have also videos on the breakdown of fats. I'll put links to each of those videos in the description below this video.